there he is. I'm so sorry. It's recording. Adding to everything. Okay. All right. So the second derivative <laughs> test. So let me ask you guys this. Um, so first off, here, here, let's say your graph looks like this. What do you guys know about it? Well, it's I mean, it could be. Conca concavity. Con it's, you concavity. know it's concave down, right? Yeah. Okay. It's concave down throughout this whole interval. Minutes. What else do you know? Minutes. What? Relative maximum. Yeah, it has a point of inflection. So think about that. Well, we actually don't know that yet. Oh, just but we know it has a relative maximum right here. Pretty much what we're going to do, we're going to combine those two ideas. We're going to combine, and also what's this, what else is this called? It's called a relative maximum, but what is this point called? Critical number. It's a critical number because that's where the slope goes flat. What we're going to do is we're going to combine both of those ideas because if we have a critical number, we know it's going to be flat. It's either going to be a relative. It's either going to be a relative maximum or a relative minimum. Also, we know it's concave down because of the shape of the graph. Well, is there? Think about this really quick. You know, concave down means like this. Will there ever be a point where it's going to be a relative minimum when it's concave down? Ever? No. no. Which is a very useful thing because now we can use concavity to tell, hey, do I have a maximum or do I have a minimum? Same thing with the bike with the other side. If you have, if it's concave up. What will you always have at the critical number? Critical number is when a graph goes flat. You would have a relative minimum. Minimum, because it's on the bottom. So we're going to use that to our advantage. This is what we call the second derivative test. So the second derivative test is another way to check for relative extremis. I gotta make sure I get the wording on this right. So if C, if C is a critical number, if C is a critical number and and F, now what does this mean right here? And F double prime of C is is it say, is it say relative max or relative min? Min. Min. So, and if C, if L prime of C is greater than zero, what does this mean right here? So when you plug in C to F double prime? And it is what? Greater than zero. Good. So, and what does C represent? The critical number. The critical number. So, C is your critical number. I make, like, add notes to that. Critical number is C. So when I say little c, that means a critical number. So what do you guys think we're going to do? Like overall in the lesson, what do you guys think we're going to do? Plug in the critical numbers into double prime. There you go. So what do we need to do first though? Find the critical numbers. Boom. There's our whole lesson right there in a nutshell. Find the critical numbers, plug them into double prime. the double prime and what? Plug them in double prime and? And see if they're more than zero. Or what's going to be the other side of that coin? Less than zero. Good. Which is basically what we've been doing. Exactly. I told you guys, technically speaking, there's not really anything new that you guys are like doing. You guys are just learning how to apply what you've been doing. So the other side of that coin is F double prime of C is less than zero, which means if it's less than zero, it's concave up. That will give you a relative maximum. And again, think about that. Like concave up means your hands are going up. Well, if your hands are going up, your relative, your uh, extremo would be here or here. So you can kind of see it on your hand too. So essentially that's pretty much, the, that's literally the whole lesson. All right, so, so I'll show you what I mean by that. So f of x is equal to five plus three x squared minus x cubed. Three x squared minus x cubed. All right, so as what Sophie said earlier, first things first, we need to find the critical numbers. <laughs> find the critical numbers. When does the derivative equal zero or the any? Bless you. Thank you. Times two. So f prime of x is equal to 6x minus 3x squared. Mm, Not yet. No? Because remember, what do we have to find first? The critical number. The critical number. But I thought you find the critical number of double prime of x. That's your test point. Oh. Remember, okay. this is where you guys have to like slow down and think about the meaning of stuff. 
Critical number is when does the first derivative equal zero? When does the slope go flat? Second derivative equal to zero is what we call the test point or your point of inflection. So there's, the name itself tells you kind of what it is. So first off, let's take, we have our first derivative, let's set it equal to zero and solve for x. Equal to zero, factor out, of, ah, I'm gonna make this even easier. x, three x, two minus x, yep. X is equal to zero and positive two. So I have my two critical numbers now, <laughs> zero and two. Oh, just three. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, now I'm going to find the second derivative. F double prime of X is equal to six minus six X. Now, I have my second derivative. I'm going to plug each of these values into it. So f um, double prime of 0 is equal to 6 minus 6 times 0. And f double prime of 2 is equal to 6 minus 6 times 2. Because that's my other oh, critical number. These are two different, these are two different like, problems. No, I thought you simplified it. So 6 and negative 6. Yeah, technically speaking, I don't even need the answer. I just need to know what the value is. So, at f at f, uh, so at zero, is it a relative uh, maximum or relative minimum? Maximum. Maximum. I'm sorry. Hold on. Wait. Minimum. Whoa. Whoa. Minimum. Con came up. Yeah. So minimum. Good. And then at uh, positive two. So maximum. There you go. That's literally the second derivative test. So, um, so to, to answer this, we say uh, relative uh, min at x equals zero because f prime Wouldn't it be f double prime? Well, well f prime of zero is equal to zero and f double prime of zero is greater than zero. So the meaning behind this f double f prime of zero means the first derivative is zero. So that's the definition of a critical number. And uh, the, uh, it's f double prime of zero is concave up. And then we would also have a relative max, mat, max at x equals two because f prime of two is equal to zero, definition of a critical number, and f double prime of two is less than zero, mm -hmm. concave down. So you're relative, you don't have to write this part, but just so you see. This is a definition of a critical number. Concave down. Okay. All right, so questions on that. Now, technically speaking, um, this is an alternative way to find extremities. You can still do the sign chart on it, but sometimes like on a non-calculated part, the sign chart will get very complicated to plug in. Because in that, like, let's just say if you had a super crazy function, like, I don't know, three natural log of x minus x squared plus four over x cubed minus the square root of x. Something like this. You guys, like say this was your derivative. Well, picking numbers and plugging them into here to check the sign could get very complicated really fast. Could, especially depending on your critical numbers. So it might be easier to plug them into the second derivative to see how that works, because you know, it just depends. Then you would get rid of your natural log because that would be one over x, which is easier to work with. Yeah. So it really just depends. But doing the sign chart as well as the second derivative test will still yield the exact same solution. 
Can we just do the second sign chart? Like, I mean, can we just do this second derivative test all the time instead of the sign chart? Technically speaking, yes. Because I like this a lot better. Than yeah, the sign chart. I mean, it tells you the exact same information. Like, okay. if this is an alternative way to do it. At, at times, one will be easier than the other. It just depends. It really it does just depends. So like, if you had, like, let's just say another, another counter example. Let's just say you had an equation that looks like this. X cubed plus the square root of X minus 12 over X squared plus two X minus 47. Like this is your first derivative. This is not bad to plug stuff in to check the signs. What's the second derivative? Exactly. Like, so it really depends. Like, taking the second derivative of this would be kind of a pain in the neck. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some people might prefer it. It really is a preference thing. Okay. So, sometimes one will be easier than the other at times. All right, for the next one uh, sine of x plus cosine of x on the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Uh oh, I heard that, Amy. Uh, I hate you. Sine of x plus cosine of x <coughs> on the integral from 0 to 2 pi. So first things first, find your derivative. F prime of x is equal to cosine x minus sine of x. I have a question. Yes. So this one's actually equal to y. Does that make a difference at all? The what? It's equal to y. Does oh, it's y? instead of f of x? Yeah. No, it's the same. Okay. Because so instead of that, it would just be y is equal to this and dy dx. Not y prime. Well, no, we never we never really say y prime. When if it's y, it's always dy dx. Okay, so now we have to set this equal to zero. Okay, here's where we have to think outside the box. Okay, so cosine of x is equal to sine of x. So think about this for a moment. Like you try to do inverse trig, and it's gonna go in a circle because you're gonna arc cosine, and you're gonna have arc cosine of sine of x. Well, think about this for a second. Isn't it pi over four? And, because again, Remember, cosine are the x values, sine are the y values. So when are the on the unit circle, when are the cosine and the sine values the exact same? At uh, pi over four, that's one of them because you get root right here. It's cosine. Cosine is root two over two, and sine is root two over two. That's going to be so. That would be your one of your answers is pi over four. But there's, there's another like part. Like the one more time. Three pi over two is down here. So three pi over two, they would not be, but you're close. So right here, then it's pi, a, a quadrant where both x and y's are both positive. Five pi over four? Yeah, five pi over four. Five pi over four would be down here in quadrant three where all your x and y values are negative. So down here would be that. So here would be your two points. So this would be pi over four and three pi and five pi over four. So when do the, so for this, when do the sine and the cosine values are, are the exact same, which is pi over four and five pi over four. I have a question. Yep. What then how does the domain come into play? Because you can continuously go in that circle. Because oh. zero to two pi is a full circle, right? Okay. So at pi over four, well if I go to another circle, that would be 9 pi over 4. And then I can do it again, which would be 17 pi over 4. And I can do it again and again and again forever. So that's why whenever you do a trig, they always say 0 to 2 pi because that's just one full circle instead of going again and again. Because technically speaking, pi over 4 and 9 pi over 4 are different numbers, technically speaking, but you're still going to get the same thing over and over and over. All right, so now your second derivative. So d, so d squared y over dx squared. This is your this is your oh, your second derivative. Oh, this second derivative is easy. Negative cosine or sorry, negative sine of x minus cosine of x. Now for plugging in midwise, d squared y over dx squared at x equals pi over uh, pi over four which would be negative sine of pi over four 
minus cosine of pi over 4. And then d squared y over dx squared at x equals 5 pi over 4 of negative sine of 5 pi over 4 minus cosine of 5 pi over 4. The top is radical square root 2 over 2 minus negative square root 2 over 2 because the negative on the outside minus root 2 over 2. And again, do I care about what the actual answer is? How about this one? Good. So what's a negative minus a negative? Well, it's a negative minus something. Negative. Negative. That's good. Yeah. So this would be a negative number. Don't care about the actual number. So I know it's going to be concave down. And then for this, negative, negative root 2 over 2 minus negative root 2 over 2. Which one's that one going to be? Good. Concave up, which is minimum, right? Yep. Minimum. Minimum. I can't say that word. Min, minimum. Minimum. Min, minimum. Min, no, min. Min. Eh. Mum. Minimum. See? You just said it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. No, you said minimum. Minimum. Min, min, no. You confused me. <laughs> Don't worry, I can't say cinnamon. Or cinnamon. 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 Or cinnamon. 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 Or cinnamon. cinnamon. I can say cinnamon, but I can't say cinnamon. cinnamon. Oh, you can't put the adjective. Yeah, that one. Whatever that one is. Cinnamon. 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 Hate that stupid word. So don't worry. I I can't say some words. Cinnamon. All right. All right. Now for our answer. Okay. So at x. So we, uh, we know it's a relative maximum, relative max at x equals pi over 4 because f prime of pi over 4 is equal to 0 and f double prime of pi over 4 is less than 0. Now, the, in, why do I have to include this? Like if I left this part out, If I left that part out right there, what would I be pretty much saying? I don't know that any value was less than zero. Nope. Uh, because if I just wrote this, the only thing this tells me is just that it's concave down at that point. Uh -huh. That's the only thing it tells me. But by incorporating that, that means, oh, it's... It, it, it's improving it, at the max. Exactly. Because it's flat there, right there. And it's concave down, which is the, defi which is the definition of a relative maximum. All right, so, and then it also you have a relative min. Relative min at x equals 5 pi over 4 because f prime of 5 pi over 4 is equal to 0 and f double prime of 5 pi over 4 is concave up. Will we ever have to, will we ever ha uh, will we have to graph this? Is it in the curve sketching? Curve sketching, I believe, comes up tomorrow. Right? No, it's Tokyo okay. night. It's Friday. Oh, uh, maybe it's Monday. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to like really look over the weekend on what's going to go on because I want to at least, I want to try and get through chapter six before semester. We yeah. only have three days next week. Yeah. I know, that's the issue. Gonna... And then we have week here, then week off. Yeah. All right. Ooh, Amy's favorite kind of questions. That's not, oh For God. what value of k does the function k ln x plus x squared have a critical number at x <laughs> equals one? Does the function have does the function have a relative maximum, minimum, or neither for that value of k? Okay. So, first, let's answer that first question. For what value of k does the function have a critical number at x is equal to one? So think about that. What does that mean? No, there's a product rule this time. Well. Ignore that right now. Well, what's the question actually asking? It's asking to find a critical number. Wait. No, it's, it's not. Giving us the critical it's, it's giving you the critical numbers. I'm saying, where do I want the critical number to occur at? X is equal to one. So, Jason, kind of, so kind of walk me through. What am I going to do? So, first things first, you know, like, what do you need one for x? 
Wait, one more time. What do you want for X? Not right away. I mean, um, we gotta find the derivative. Good. What are we gonna do with the derivative? Um, so we can figure out. Because why? Because we wanna find the critical numbers. Good. Critical numbers. But it tells you at what X value to find the critical numbers. Then. And then we solve some X. Or we plug in X. There you go. Good. So that's what we're gonna do to start. First, we're gonna find our derivative. So f of x is equal to k natural log of x plus x squared. Now again, k is a number. Like it could be 7, it could be 11, it could be 482, we don't know. So that's not the product rule. Correct. Because k is a number. It's, it's no different if it was like 7 natural log of x. So it would be k 1 over x. Perfect. Or just k over x. Okay. Exactly. So f prime of x would be k times 1 over x plus 2x. Now to simplify that, I'm going to write k over x. And that's the first derivative. Good. Now, as what Jason was saying, is this is my derivative, but critical number is when does the first derivative equal 0? And I already know where I want the critical number to, at what x value it's going to occur at. It's going to occur at 1. So give me k over 1 plus 2 times 1 is equal to 0. K plus 2 is equal to 0. K is equal to negative 2. Wait. You... What? Okay. Good here, right? Oh, I wrote K over 1. No, no, no. K over X times yeah. K. Hold on. Never yeah, works times K. Which is the K Did you do the product rule? No, no, no. I just wrote it wrong. Okay. K, so, K equals negative 2. Now, here's the thing. Because it's asking whether it's going to be increasing, or it's a relative maximum, a minimum, or neither. So what do you guys think we're going to do from here? Plug K back into the result, or into the derivative. I, now, I know, now that I know what K is, I can plug it into my derivative. All right? So what I'm going to do is, now that I know what K is, I know F prime of X is equal to negative 2 over x plus 2x. I now know that because k is negative 2. Why don't you put the 1 in there too? Because this is my derivative, right? Uh -huh. This I, The only reason one, I plugged 1 is because I wanted the critical number to occur at that. Oh, okay. So now I know what k is, but the question is, is at x equals 1, is it a minimum, maximum, or neither? So we have one of two options here. We do a sign chart, mm -hmm. or now that we know what the derivative is, or now we know what the second derivative means, we can use that. Second derivative. So, if I were to do the second derivative, that's the quotient rule. Oh, then you have to. Do no, the I don't. It's not technically. Well, it could be the quotient rule, but I'm going to rewrite this for a moment. F prime of x is negative two x to the negative first plus two x. Those would be the exact same, right? Okay. Okay, so let's take my second derivative. F double prime of x is equal to positive 2 over x squared plus 2. Now, how did I get that real quick? Just quick diversion. Negative 2 times bring down your exponent, negative 1, subtract your, exp subtract your exponent by 1. It would be that. Negative times negative is a positive. Negative powers means you bring it to the bottom. Why is it a negative 2 power? You have a negative 1 power right now. Because what's negative 1? Take away 1. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, what? How'd you get the 2 over x squared? I got 2x. Because well, you're taking the derivative again. Yeah, but I got 2x. Would you just multiply the 2 from, like the two and the 1? Well, it would, be, a positive I mean, it would be 2x to the negative second power because it's negative 1 minus 1. So that's negative 2. Yes. And then you have to move the negative 2 to the bottom. But you can't leave. Oh. If you can do the quotient rule. No, All right. Do the rule. Okay, so now here is my second derivative. But again, I know where the critical number is at. So what am I going to do with that? Just like in the previous problems, like over here. Once you find a critical number, what do you do with it in the second derivative? Plug it in. Plug it in and check the sign. So if I plug in f double prime of 1 is equal to 2 over 1 squared plus 2, what's that going to be? Positive. Four. So it's concave up at x equals 1, which means 
what kind of extrema is it? Minimum. It's a minimum because it's concave up. So, relative min, uh, relative min at x equals 1 because f prime of 1 is equal to 0 and f double prime of 1 is greater than 0. So there's two questions we answered here. We figured out what k was, and we figured out what uh, what kind of extrema it gave us. Is k one of the like actual things I was asking us to solve? For? Yeah, because look at look read the question back. You see how there's two question marks there? Yeah. One of them was what is the value of k, and then what kind of extrema is it at x equals one? Are we having a quiz on this on Friday, or are you going to let you in early? No, I think we're going to actually do a quiz on this. We need to get back into those. We'll see. So, and again, could you guys have done the sign chart? Yes, you could have. Who? Cameron. No. So, that's going to, like, if you guys got to this part, now, like, on my exam, even on the AP exam, it doesn't explicitly say, unless it explicitly says use the second derivative test, you guys could go straight to a sign chart with this. So what you could have done as well, this is another way you could have gone about it. Again, it only matters if it specifies. So kind of rewinding a little bit. So going back, if we were here and we know what my derivative was, I could have done a, um, I could have done a sign chart, but you gotta be careful because this sign chart would not be correct because what else could have occurred? I have a fraction. What cannot happen in a fraction? Denominator equals zero. Denominator equals zero. So if you were to do a sign chart, you would need to consider your other critical numbers, your other critical numbers that occur, which in this case would be zero. So again, this is another way you could have gone about it. Okay, so negative one, one half, and two. At negative one, it's a negative divided by a negative. Yeah, that's ugly. Wait, no, ne positive, negative. Oh, is that equal zero? Oh, snaps. There would be another critical number. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, see, this is why, like, this is where, like, this, the sign chart would be tough. Because, like, if you went to this way, because you would have other things you would have to consider. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> so, does the second derivative that make sense? Yeah. Okay, let's stick with that. But... Anyone else? Like, so do you see how what I'm saying though? Like, the rest of the, the rest of you guys. Like, you could do the sign chart as well to check to see what kind of extrema it was. You don't have to do it unless it explicitly says use the second derivative test, which I don't think I've ever occurred an APA test where it didn't. But the second derivative test, it was very easy for us to see what it was. In this case, it would be a pain. Like, so if I did one half, that would be negative two divided by one half, which is a negative. Negative four. So it would be negative. Plugging in two would be a positive. So the sign chart goes down and then up, which again, it shows that it's a minimum. It can get complicated depending on what you're doing. So I'd say stick with the second derivative test because to me it's a lot easier, but you don't have to do it. 10 bucks says, like, Michaela's gonna watch that and Kyle, they're like, huh? <laughs> Kidding. Happy Kidding birthday, you guys. Kyle. Happy so, birthday, Kyle. Oh, is this birthday? Oh, is that why he's not here? Oh boy, he's at Disneyland, huh? Mm -hmm. Is he really? Yeah. He's at Disneyland? Yeah. I totally <laughs> took a shot in the dark. Hey, bring back some Mickey ears. Actually, you know what? I always wanted the hat. Like the wizard's hat. The sorcerer's hat. That's what it's called. Okay, last one. Right? Yeah. Okay. I think so. So. All right, so for what value, what value of, uh, of k does the function uh, f of x equals k x e to the x plus 2x have a horizontal tangent line at x equals 0? Does the function have a relative maximum, minimum, or neither for that value of k? So first and foremost, we need to figure out what k is. But what does horizontal tangent line mean? I don't know. Uh, it's flat. Flat, which, hey, what does that mean? It's a critical number. 
horizontal tangent line and critical number are the exact same meaning. So critical number, horizontal tangent line, critical number. If anything, cross out horizontal tangent line and write critical number. You guys can do that on the test. I don't care. You can do it on the AP test. Uh, actually, I strong, I advise against that. But still, you can do that for you. All right, so it's f of x equals kx e to the x plus 2x. Yep. All right, now, this is where you would use the product rule because it's 1x times another x. So this would be my, so this is where I need to use the product rule at. And I'm going to have this be my first, this be my second. All right, so the derivative of the first, kx, would be k times the second, plus the derivative of the second, which would be e to the x, times the first, plus 2. So there's my first derivative. Ooh, that's a like fun. No, it's not. Yeah. Okay. So, let's see what we got. All right, now let's clean this up a little bit. K e to the x plus k x e to the x plus two. Was that the first derivative? What? Was that the first yep, derivative? Yep, that's the first derivative. All right, now let's see. We have my first derivative. Let's set this equal to zero. K e to the x plus k x e to the x plus two is equal to zero. And then you oh wait, no, yeah. And uh, what x value did it say? Zero. Zero? Oh, even better. All right, so I set it equal to zero. So k e to the zero plus k zero e to the zero plus two. Also, oh, not bad. It looks ugly though. It looks ugly, but Amy, what's gonna happen right here? Bye bye. Bye, Felicia. That goes by. So and then e to the zero is one. So this would be k plus two is equal to zero. K is equal to negative two. I'm break some jumble so I forget what you did. Huh? I'm trying to tell myself. <coughs> so k is equal to negative two. Again. Yeah. And what if I did that to you guys on like the exam? For your response, everything is negative two. I would die. Don't do that. What if I did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8? I have a question everything. Please don't. That'd be fun, actually. Oh, dude, that'd be no. sick. That'd be a fun one. Mm -hmm. Everything's different. What if I found some kind of elaborate pattern? All right. What if you did all the answers to pi, like 3, 1, Pi. <laughs> okay. Now, let's look at this really quick. So, what would be the easiest derivative to take? Probably this one. Probably that one, because that's not bad. But again, I now know what k is. So I'm going to plug in k. f prime of x is equal to negative 2 e to the x plus negative 2 x e to the x plus 2. There's my first derivative. Are you putting it into the original one? My is derivative, it? yes. Because I now know what k is. Where did the twos come from? The negative twos? Yeah. Because I now oh, know what k is. You're plugging k. Okay, got yep. it. Yeah. Now that we know what k is, we can plug it in. Because again, now we need to go down the next step and what is my second derivative at that value? So let's take the second derivative. All right, so for this first part, uh, negative two is a coefficient, leave it alone. Derivative e to the x is e to the x, negative two e to the x, plus now I need to do the product rule for this one again. So this is gonna be my first, negative two x, this is gonna be my second. So the derivative of the first, negative 2 times the second plus the derivative of the second, which is e to the x, times the first. Yeah. Yeah, and then plus 0 because derivative of this piece would be 0. It's negative 2ex plus negative 2ex plus negative 2xex. Yep. So I'm going to clean this up. Negative 2e to the x minus 2e to the x. Uh, Wouldn't minus it just be negative four? You could do that. You, yeah, because you, you, they're, yeah. they're like terms. You could do that. I'm not going to because I don't want to. Because now what am I going to do? Fair enough. You're going to... Wait, can you factor out? Because remember, I need to check my I need to check at what critical number? Zero. Zero. So I'm going to plug zero in. So F double prime of zero is equal to negative two e to the zero 
and I'm just going to ignore parentheses, e to the 0 minus 2 e to the 0 minus 2 0 e to the 0. Well, this whole thing cancels out because 0 times anything is itself. So this would be negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2, minus 2 times 1, which is negative 2, negative 4. So f double prime of 0 is negative 4, which means... I got negative 6. Eh? Huh? This, did, you, did, you, did you cancel this out? I forgot to multiply by x. You forgot to multiply by 0. Ah! Well, because ah. I didn't write the ah. x here. Eh, so, so right. it's a relative maximum Good. of x equals 0 Perfect. because f prime of 0 equals 0. Good. Prime. And? And f prime of nope. 1. Not f prime of 0. Nope. Here's that one. What are you talking about? Relative max at x equals uh, 0 because f prime of 0 is equal to 0 and what's the next part? F double, oh, there F you double go. Prime F double of prime of zero, 0 is less than good. 0. So there's your two solutions. We got what k is and we got what that is. Ba, 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 stay alive. Yay, perfect. I'm going to hold. I don't want to drop out. What? No, because I really realized that this is the only class I actually have work that tried on. Right, same. So I'm feeling English. Avid is easy. Yeah. English is easy. English Ashley, is easy. stop it. Yeah. What about in homework checks? Today I would have been fine, actually. Yeah, I, I see. Never, 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 never. It's true. All right. Um, go odds. Okay. Because you guys are all odd. Why are you so funny? <laughs> <laughs> I've always been super sassy today. <laughs> it's not a good day today. Because it's home day. Isn't that like when you're supposed to be like, yeah, the best? Because like, through the week, 